Well, remember then, how do you profit from fear, right? I mean, right. but remember non-equity options as a whole. I have a whole video on non-equity options, maybe two or three. If you tell me you missed your mark on the seven because of non-equity options, I'm going to say, yeah, I don't believe that. Well, can I mean, you also go things. into a little bit, and I'm sorry, uh, but the I am I seem to keep messing up when they're talking about um, export and import and when it okay so we have two we have two mono, mono, uh, let me just get a whiteboard here real quick we have two mnemonic devices to help us answer questions about using options to hedge okay and the two we have the two memory aid devices we have are epic right and you got to be careful. I always joke, if you have any kind of an international perspective, you are at risk on this test. So yeah. remember, we are That's in the U.S. I'm missing these questions. Well, we're in the U.S. and the U.S. is not, dollar is not a foreign currency. Right? Right. So you got to stay focused on that. That's our first thing. The U.S. dollar is not a foreign currency. And if you say the dollar is weak or strong, that's a meaningless discussion unless I tell you in relationship to what? Right. So, I mean, you know, you say, hey, the dollar's strong, the dollar's weak. Well, that doesn't mean anything unless I tell you what the other currency is. Right. So, we have two versions of this. We have U.S. Let me get uh, this here. We have U.S. importers and exporters. Uh, when I think of U.S. exporters, I think of uh, Boeing. And we have U.S. importers. You know, I think of Dean. I'm joking, but, you know, I import a lot of stuff. You know, Swiss watches, sapphires from Thailand, cigars from Cuba, right? So U.S. importers. I'm thinking here I'm cheesing, but more like a wine merchant or something like that. So we have U.S. exporters and U.S. importers. Okay. okay so if I am a U.S. Uh, exporter, what would I be fearful of? You know, because hedge is sure. protection. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm selling my planes to our Japanese friend and they're giving me yen, I'm not afraid if I'm Boeing that the yen is strong and I get more dollars when I turn the yens into dollars to pay my workers in Seattle. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. right? What I'm afraid of as a U.S. exporter is that the dollar goes up. Now, what that really means is the yen is going down. And I'm not going to get as many dollars for the yen that they're paying me, at Nippon Airlines, for example. Right. So what I want to do is I want to do something in the options market that would offset or counteract what I'm going to lose in the spot market. So what I'm going to do is buy puts on the Japanese yen. So I'm on the chief financial officer of Boeing and I'm talking to the CEO. He says, uh, how are we doing on currency? I said, well, boy, you know, it was a tough quarter in Japan because the yen went down, but I did hedge that. I have some Japanese yen puts that uh, have uh, worked out for us have uh, taken care of some of that loss. And so exporters are going to, uh, U.S. exporters are going to buy a put on the foreign currency. So that's what EPIC stands for, exporters buy puts, U.S. If I'm a U.S. importer, like I'm a wine merchant, Mm -hmm. And I import European wines. I'm not afraid that my dollar is strong. Because if my dollars are strong against the euro, I end up with more wine. Life is wonderful. Hedging isn't about if you're right. Hedging is about what if you're wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I think, okay, well, that means the dollar is going to go down and Dean isn't going to get as much European wine. Now, remember, the dollar is not a foreign currency. Right. If I say the dollar is going down, I'm saying the euro is going up. And so, again, I'm the chief financial officer. You, Jessica, are the wine geek. You know, you started out this wine importing business. And you say, hey, Dean, what's up with the, the euro? I say, well, Jessica, you know, it's been kind of challenging because, as you know, the dollar has been weak. And we haven't been able to buy as much stuff in Europe. Mm -hmm. I said, but I did hedge that. I did hedge that. And I mm -hmm. bought some calls on the euro. And so we have offset some of that loss with the intrinsic value of the call contracts I bought. Okay. So U.S. importers uh, buy calls. 
right? Because what I'm afraid of is the euro or whatever happens to do. Now, you got to be careful. It's a giant reading test. And this is where most people get hung up. I get calls all the time. Epic didn't work. And I said, well, read the question again, probably because it wasn't a U.S. exporter or a U.S. importer, right? Yes. So it could be a foreign. Yes. Right. Where is this company at? You know, maybe it's a Japanese company, a foreign corporation, not a U.S. corporation, a foreign corporation. And so for a foreign corporation, this is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm a, a Japanese company and I'm importing the planes. Right. So I'm buying Boeing planes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not afraid that my yen is strong because that means I buy more planes. Now, so if I'm a Japanese importer, I'm not afraid of the yen being strong. I'm afraid of the yen being weak. And so, you know, again, I'm the chief financial officer. I'm Japanese in this situation. I'm not a U.S. person anymore. Mm -hmm. And you say, Dean, what's going on in the uh, exchange markets? I say, well, as you know, the uh, yen has been uh, going down and the dollar has been going up and we've been getting killed, uh, you know, turning the, uh, you know, dollars into yen, you know. Because uh, mm -hmm. we don't get to buy as much stuff. Our yen isn't uh, going as far as it used to go in terms of imports. And so, yeah, it's bad news. But I did hedge it. And I did buy some puts on the yen. And we made some money on those uh, those uh, puts I bought. And that way offset some of the loss we had in what's called the spot market. In the spot market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So now, again, if I'm a foreign corporation... Mm -hmm. so I'm a Japanese exporter. Oh, you're, you know, my Chinese friends, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, I can't believe how cheap they'll sell me stuff. It's like, you know, it's crazy. You know, my dollars can buy a lot of Chinese stuff. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I just really, they make an electrical well, car called a Seagull. Idea, electrical right? car. In this jelly, this electrical car called a Seagull is 10 grand. <laughs> they were, even with the, if we put a hundred percent tariff on this uh, Chinese electrical car, it's still going to be 20 grand and it's still going to be a good deal. <laughs> you know, so, well, okay. So I am now an exporter to the U S okay. Right. And again, I'm not afraid if I'm selling stuff in the U S and the dollar is strong because that would be great. Right. Cause you know, I'm selling my stuff and I'm getting more UN or getting more yen, whatever the case may be. Okay. You know, what I would be afraid of, is that the dollar is a week, right? Because then I don't get as many uh, yuan or yen coming back to me. Now, remember, where you got to make the U-turn is to say the dollar is weak. The dollar is not a foreign currency. And, you know, you can't buy puts on the dollar. That'd be unpatriotic. So what you got to do is make the U-turn and say, okay, if Dean's saying that the dollar is going down, what I'm saying is the yuan or yen or euro, whatever it is, is going up. So again, I'm talking to you. Uh, where the Japanese, uh, or we'll do the Chinese, the Chinese uh, chief financial or the Chinese uh, electrical car maker, you know, BYD. And you say, hey, Dean, what, how's it going overseas? I said, well, you know, we've had a little bit of a problem because, you know, we're selling our cars for dollars and the dollars aren't getting as much yuan as they used to. And that's bad for us. And so, you know, we're kind of really struggling there. But I did do a hedge. You know, the dollar went down and the yuan or yen went up and I bought calls and the value of those call contracts have offset some of the loss we have in the foreign currency markets, the exchange rate. Okay. So that is the key to using these memory aid devices. You got to know first when you're reading the question, is the corporation a U.S. corporation, U.S. exporter or importer, or is it a foreign corporation? I think one of the reasons why it was getting confusing for me is because the question was asking not would you buy, but what would you sell? Well, you wouldn't really sell in a hedge. I, again, you need to cut and paste or send me the QID. But I, remember, I gotta, just I gotta, in general, because that's, that's okay. That's well, Jessica, the way the slow down. Slow oh, down. Sorry. But just in case, right? Are, we should always be prejudicial about given that we can sell an option or buy an option that mm -hmm. we should buy. Because remember, if we buy and we're wrong, we just lose our premium. Right. So the hedge is always, there's very few situations in which a hedge is not going to be buying an option position, buying a call or a put. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, remember, if you sell an option, 
Well, then you're only getting what we call a partial hedge. So now I'm the chief financial officer again. I say, Jessica, the puts or calls I wrote expired worthless. We get to keep the premium. And that is helpful. It offsets some of our loss. However, that's not very good. That's a partial hedge. That kind of works. You don't right. want something kind of works. You want something that works. Right. right. So. I think the reason I couldn't answer it is because they were specifically asking. That was part of the question. So. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I'm not sure exactly what to do. Well, be careful. Like I say, you know, I, I need the context of the question. As it stands right now, it's a ghost question. But remember, they might in the question say, I'm selling, you know, importing wine or I'm in uh, stereos or whatever. So there might be indeed some of that in the question, right? But again, the question isn't about the products being bought or sold. It's about the currency mm -hmm. that we're, you know, either, you know, paying or receiving. All right. So